Bowling is the most sought after skill, and after you start to feel solid with it, your willingness to try new things increases. So why does it seem that folks get stuck on this skill, and subsequently, their progress flattens out? Let's revisit an idea we touched on earlier. The two requirements for the mastery of every skill is comfort and orientation. If you are panicked, you immediately lose your orientation, and that mindset leaves you unfit to think and learn clearly. So before we get too far into pitfalls and technique, let's discuss pitfalls and approach. All too common, I see folks practicing their roles in an environment that is unlike the one that they want to master the role in. A combat role typically happens in a very adverse environment and in less than ideal conditions. Obviously we need a safe and relatively controlled environment to learn and practice in, but what are we practicing for? Once you accept the fact that rolling and being upside down in your kayak is a part of the sport, you begin to embrace it and even like it. What goes through your mind when the idea of flipping over goes through your head? Is it, am I going to roll up? You have to shut that part out. You have to embrace it as a reality and then logically proceed with how you are going to roll. Ultimately, it won't always work. But that one time it doesn't work doesn't mean that it won't work again. Brush it off and move on. A hip snap roll is broken down into four distinct phases. A setup, a sweep, a hip snap, and recovery. Roll varieties such as the C to C, sweep, and back deck are all dependent upon the same thing, a powerful hip snap. The most crucial step to getting a combat roll is getting your body and paddle out from under the boat, and the paddle on top of the water where it is more useful. This phase is what we call the setup, and it can't be emphasized enough to how crucial it is for the beginning combat rollers. This is the highest the paddle will ever get outside of the water throughout the roll progression. And because it starts the progression out, it affects everything that follows. Too many folks practice falling over in their setup, which is never likely to happen in a combat setting. So once we feel comfortable with the roll, we need to stop practicing this way. Or even better, never start. Once you get the orientation of where the paddle goes, start forcing yourself to fall over without the setup and you will get used to moving your body out from underneath the boat. Another common problem with the setup is the orientation of the body. When setting the paddle up along the side of the boat, we get more extension if we move our body back to the midpoint of the boat, or hip axis, and wrap our body around the deck of the boat. Again, this step is the most crucial as this gets the body and paddle out from under the boat and the paddle on top of the water where it is more useful. The second phase is the body paddle sweep. I call it that because the torso should be making the paddle move out to our hip axis. Watch how the paddler swings their body outward to the hip axis. This rotation happens throughout the core and hinges from the pelvis. It is important to realize the difference between this rotation outward and just leaning backward. This is important as it affects the power of the hip snap phase. The roll of the boat is most effective through the axis through your hips. And if you lean forward or backward from this axis, it increases the difficulty of this step. An indication that your body and paddle aren't moving in unison is a deep paddle and a separation of the pivot hand from the hull of the boat. The third phase is the hip snap and brace. If we effectively swung the paddle out to the midpoint, we have maximized our bracing potential as well as maximized our wind-up for the hip snap. As we swing our body outward in one direction, we simultaneously pull with the knee on the opposite side. If this body sweep does not occur, then subsequently we also don't have the lower knee respond. Once the body sweeps and the knee engages, it is at this point the paddle braces lightly and we powerfully close the gap between the knee and the paddle with our hip snap. There is, of course, one thing that can shut this entire process down, and that is the order in which we bring everything upward. The boat, the body, and then finally, the head. Another way I like to think of this is keeping curve in your spine, stacking every single vertebrae up in order. As soon as you straighten up the spine, or worse, lift your torso too early, 
then the opposite knee will pull you back over. The final phase is the recovery. Believe it or not, there are many folks who, if they were to focus their energy on this phase, their roles would be a lot more bomber. This is the phase where we recover the body back to the center of the kayak, where we are most stable. There are various ways to recover, but ultimately, the goal is to get our body to stop lingering on the edge of stability. It is during this stage that we need to pull on the opposite knee to help pull our body back to the middle. If your hip snap was powerful and therefore we were less reliant on the paddle, then we have the paddle near the surface to help overcome this force. It is important to note, the paddle is not used to roll the boat. The hip snap rolls the boat. The paddle is used to provide an initial brace and recover the torso. The roll has a cumulative progression. If early on in the roll sequence it starts to fall apart, then the steps following become worse. When practicing and breaking down your roll, think of the four phases one step at a time. The setup. Our body should be aligned with the hip axis. Body wrapped around the side of the boat, both hands even and along the side of the boat. The sweep. Our body and paddle swing out to the hip axis from the pelvis while the pivot hand rests near or on the hull of the kayak. The hip snap. The paddle provides a brace as a hip snap is initiated from the trailing knee following the sequence of the boat, body, and head. The recovery. The paddle continues to brace as our body recovers back towards the middle of the kayak finally sliding the paddle in towards the center.